got a big bowl of berries, let's make some jam. <laughs> show you two of the ugliest things in my kitchen arsenal you know ugly can mean a couple of things but when it's in the kitchen usually ugly means well loved so the first of those is my ball blue book that I've had uh, since it came off the printing press um, I love this book it's got all the basic things you need to learn how to can and I'm gonna see if I can find a link for this for you. But I mean, you can just see how it has not been gathering dust on the shelf. It's been serving me well. I'll bet I've had this 30 years. I don't know, I'll have to look it up. And then the second thing is this. So this is without any doubt, the ugliest thing that I own. <laughs> but that just means that it um, has been serving me all these years <laughs> to the point where, yes, it's a little rusty. I don't know how long that will hold out. I may have to get another one at some point, but I just love this. And it's that speckled uh, kind of aluminum, you know, uh, you get everywhere. So what you do with this, I gotta get that lid out of the way, is I just pulled this up for now, but you fill it with water. I usually go about here because you want the water to end up being an inch above the lids. So depending on what kind of jar, whether it's a quart or a pint or a half pint or whatever, you're gonna want to uh, make sure you have enough water, but it has to boil first. So once it is boiling, um, I then will put the jars here kind of carefully. And I do have this kind of tong thing. I'll take a picture and show you that too, that saves you. I mean, I would burn my hands constantly if I didn't have that. And once they're all in there, then you just gently lower it down into the water and put on the equally oiled lid. And then you just cook it according to, or I should say let it process according to the directions on your recipe. So there it is. And then the last of my show and tell for today are these just adorable tulip weck jars. I have to tell you when I was uh, using this, or I should say filling it yesterday, because I did make the jam yesterday and I'm gonna go over it with you. Um, I put the first one on and it just, bling, it just went right up in the air and landed in the sink, which I was fortunately wearing my glasses because I think it could put out an eye. But these are not canning jars. These are, I think of them as what's left over after you've you know canned and you don't have enough jam or whatever to put in any more jars, then I always fill these little weck jars. And I take these with us camping, like I make lemon curd and put that in here and we love that. But can you imagine how cute this would be if you made your jam, you'd have to freeze them and then make your jam closer to Christmas because these are only going to last in the fridge about three weeks with the recipe that I'm telling you today because it's very low sugar. If it has a lot of sugar in there, which most jam recipes do, most jam recipes are one cup of berries to one cup of sugar. That just makes my teeth hurt. But if you're using one of those, the sugar does act as a preservative, but um, when you're using low sugar, you don't get that benefit. So once it's in, this little jar and goes right in the fridge, three weeks, eat it up because it will not be good after that but um how cute and if you did like I said if you made them at Christmas you just put a little cute little bow on them and bring them over to your neighbors the mailman whatever so um, I'm gonna link to all this so you can see where you can get it I use these constantly oh the other thing these are great for is overnight um, chia pudding which is another great thing I'll have to do a recipe another time but aren't they just the cutest little jars you've ever seen Dave and I have come to an understanding it really honestly just dawned on me I don't know, a month ago that I have a hard time parting with containers. Because as I look around, I have oh, things like this or baskets. That's really hard for me. So don't ask me to part with my containers. I was trying to think how many times I've used that water bath canner. Dropped my weck jar. 
let me start over. I kind of wanted to figure out approximately how many times I have used that water bath canner over the years. So I thought about all the things I make. I try every year to make um, at least 24 quarts of pickles because Dave loves those pickles. Actually, my kids do, friends do. My mother-in-law loves them. So I try to do enough that I can share. And then I do, of course, a lot of jam, um, different ones. You know, I always blackberry because they grow like a weed in the Pacific Northwest. So it's a good way to deal with them. And then, like I've said before, we have like 120 blueberry bushes. So um, some of those are still like, they're not babies anymore because this is our third year. So they're like teenager blueberry bushes, but still a bunch of them this year really produced. So we're swimming in blueberries and I freeze those for oatmeal in the winter. Doesn't that sound cozy? And um, uh, the chia pudding and stuff like that. But besides the jam, I like to do jalapenos, pickled jalapenos and dilly beans or, you know, jalapeno bean or not beans, I'm sorry, asparagus. Um, so between all of that, I got to thinking about, I, I don't know, I might conservatively can about 50 jars of different things. Oh, and I make um, barbecue sauce and I can that too. And spaghetti sauce, I'm forgetting. So actually it's going to be more than the 50 that I did figure, but I had thought if I make 50 a year, let's just say that. And I've had that about 30 years. Well, that's 1,500 jars of uh, whatever that has come out of that water can water bath canner. That's an mouthful. So that's pretty good. I mean, that's really more than you normally expect out of your appliances. So I'm pretty happy with that purchase. That was one of the good ones. So anyway, I hope that you will consider doing the jam, the canning way, because it's a great skill to know. Um, if not, you know, you could, you could make this jam and just do nothing but fill little jars and put them in the fridge, but you would have to eat them in a hurry or make a very small batch. All right, let's get on to the canning. It's always a good idea to eliminate distractions. And for me, that meant filling the hummingbird feeder because their feeder is right outside my window and I just cannot take their little withering looks anymore. I don't know what's distracting you at your house. Once you're ready to go, you're going to want to fill the water bath canner to the line that I'm showing you here. Put it on the stove, put the lid on, and start it on high because you want to get it boiling. At the same time, put your canning jars in the dishwasher because you want those hot. You'll see later in the video when it dawns on me that I forgot to tell you this at this point. You're going to want to sterilize your canning lids as well. Not the rings, you don't have to worry about those. But put the lids in a little pot, cover it with water and bring it to a boil. At that point, turn off the heat, put a lid on the pot and just wait until you need them a little bit later. It's going to look like I'm pushing it with the size of pot that I'm using, but I've made this recipe enough that I know I can put it in that pot. This is a triple recipe, but it's going to go right to the top and you're going to think I've lost my mind. As I said before, most recipes are one cup of sugar to one cup of berries, which is fine if you want a toothache, in my opinion. <laughs> but we really love it with just one cup of sugar to five cups of berries. So maybe try it that way first. You're, after you put the sugar in, by the way, look at all that sugar. That's just three cups. Can you imagine putting 12 more cups of sugar in that? First of all, it wouldn't fit. But second of all, who would ever want to do that? Add one tablespoon of lemon for each batch that you're making. I don't know what that little thing is. I don't want to know. Gone now. By the way, that should have been one tablespoon of lemon juice for each five, or I'm sorry, yes, for each five cups of berries that you're using. So basically one cup of sugar, one tablespoon of lemon juice per five cups of berries. Hope I made that clear. So now I'm just mushing it down with a potato masher. And as you see, it does go down a little bit here. And it's going to go down further as it simmers because the water will evaporate out. As the berries are cooking, they're going to foam a bit. And that's not a problem if you're standing there the whole time. But this batch took me an hour and a half to simmer down to where I wanted it. And I just wasn't going to stand there that long. So I did set my timer for 15 minutes at a time, and then I would go in and check. Now they, you know, the invisible they, say that it's never okay to can dairy. But even they say that you can put a tab of butter in the pot in order to keep it from foaming. 
and a short hour and a half later, here we are. You're looking for two things when you're stirring. You don't want it to be sticking and you don't want that foam to go over the top of your pot because that would make a horrible mess. So but there's a test that you can do when you kind of feel like you're getting down to um, the point where it could be jam. What you want to do is put one of your plates in the freezer for 10 minutes, then pour a little dollop out on the plate and put it back in the freezer for two minutes. And then what happens is when you pull it out, you're gonna run your finger through it. If the two halves don't merge, then you've reached jam consistency and you're ready to put them in your hot canning jars. So you're gonna to wanna to pull your jars out just a couple at a time from the dishwasher because you want them to stay hot. Now there are a few tools to canning that are really not negotiable because they're just gonna save you from getting burned and save you from making a bigger mess than you're gonna see here, which is still a little bit of a mess. But one is this funnel. You probably have a funnel at the house. If not, go to the dollar store. But I am gonna to link to all of these things in the description so you can take a look at them. You're going to want to fill this particular recipe to one quarter of an inch above the, or excuse me, a quarter of an inch headspace is what they call it. And all that means is that the jam stops a quarter of an inch from the very top. And all of this has to do with sealing the lids. There are a lot of rules to canning, but every one of them is for your safety. One of those is that you want to wipe the rims of your jars with a damp, um, either a paper towel or a napkin or something before you put the lids on because you wanna make sure you get a really good seal. I'm embarrassed to admit that I have only just recently discovered this little doodad. It's a magnet that pulls your lids out of the warm water that you've had them in. I should have said that earlier, but stick them in a pot, pour some water in there and make sure it gets hot. Um, this is fantastic because I used to use um, little tongs and it just was frustrating. I mean, I didn't always get them on the first try and then sometimes they stick together in that pot and I always just sort of felt like I was compromising the lid. I don't know. I don't know. My own paranoia. Now this is where I really started working fast as you can see. Sometimes you just want to get done, you know. Have a light touch when you're screwing those rings down. You don't want them to be super tight. Once all of your jars are sealed with the ring, they're not really sealed yet, that will come later, but once you've got them all ready to go for the water bath canner, you're gonna put them inside on that rack that I showed you earlier. Now, just a word about sizes of jars and processing time. Some of my recipes say that both pints and half pints require five minutes in the hot water bath. But generally speaking, it's much better to just do um, half pints by themselves and then pints by themselves and quarts. In fact, you'd never do quarts with one of the smaller ones. It has to do with the density of the product inside. Take them out after the time has passed, in this case, five minutes, and then you put them on a towel or something soft and you just sit and wait. And what's going to happen is you're going to hear the most delightful pinging sound and that will tell you that they have sealed. Leave the jars undisturbed for 24 hours and then take the rings off. You don't want to store them with the rings on because if by some chance there was bacteria in one of the jars and the ring was on, the seal would stay on and you wouldn't know. But with the rings off, it would come off and then you know not to eat that one. So I hope that you will go ahead and give this a try. It's not hard at all and you're going to be so happy when winter comes and there's a blizzard outside and you're eating toast with your own homemade blackberry jam. As always, if this is of benefit to you, please like, subscribe, and share. Thanks so much.